Hi everyone, thanks to the log for accepting our contribution. My name is Federico Sopetti. I'm working with a postdoc in the Observatory Astronomico de Córdoba. And this work is a collaboration with Hugo Folonier, Martin Leiva, and Christian Boyer. And it's about a crypt time model for the rotational evolution of a circumbinary planet. Just as a brief introduction, we know that the rotational evolution of extended bodies in compact systems is strongly affected by tides. Uh, in the two-body problem, we know that tides tend to drive the spins to a spin orbit resonance that, for the case of low eccentric orbits, using, for example, the cryptide model, um, we expect that for stiff bodies, the rotational stationary state perfectly synchronize its spin with the mean motion, while on the other hand, we expect that for gaseous bodies, we expect a subtle synchronous state for the spins, except for the circular case. About the three-body problem, we made some contribution in some previous works, and in which we studied the case of a circumbinary planet with a weak friction model for the tides, and found that uh, two, two interesting things. One of them is that the rotational evolution time scales are typically much shorter than the orbital evolution. And the other one, and maybe the most interesting one, is that the rotational stationary state is typically subsynchronous for circumbinary planets. So the, the thing there is that we have used a weak friction model that are only expected to be valid for the case of uh, planets with a very large gaseous component. So with this limitation, we try to move to a more sophisticated model, like the creep type model. In this model, we need to calculate an equilibrium figure that results from the interaction of uh, the, the two companion in this case. These are the representation of the interaction with this mass, and this other ellipsoid is the representation of the interaction with this other mass. Uh, as a result of this interaction, we can calculate the equilibrium surface equation with an expression like this, which is dependent on the equatorial flattening and also the polar flattening with an expression like this. But the, the interesting thing here is that we can model these two two-body interaction by a unique interaction with uh, an, an equivalent equilibrium surface given by an expression like this, which depends on its own uh, equatorial flattening, its own polar flattening, and its own um, direction. All of these three parameters can be calculated as a function of the two bodies interaction. So we have a, a flat equilibrium ellipsoid like this one here. Another thing that we need to calculate in the uh, creep type model is the real figure of the body. If we take into account the tidal dissipation in, inside the body, and that is why we propose an equilibrium uh, and a real surface equation like this. And uh, we are assuming that delta is the lag angle, which is uh, the, the, different, the difference in the orientation between the equilibrium figure and the real figure. And we use the creep equation to relate the old equilibrium figure with this real figure. The creep equation is this equation here and is obtained when we solve the Navier-Stokes equation for a Newtonian fluid. And as you can see, it depends on this parameter gamma, which is the relaxation factor, and which is also uh, inversely proportional to the viscosity. Uh, if we apply this equation, we obtain a set of three shape equation for the, the shape of each body and the shape is characterized by 
the equatorial flattening here, the real equatorial flattening, the real uh, polar flattening, this here, and the lag angle. If we calculate the, the tidal potential that each body generates on, it, on each companion, we obtain an expression like this. This is the, this is the tidal potential of an ellipsoid with um, inertia momentum A, B, and C, which can be calculated as a function of the, the flattenings. And we can also calculate the force that is applied on its companion, and also we can calculate the torques. And the, with the back or the reaction torque, we can calculate the variation in the spin of each body. Uh, neglecting this term here, we obtain um, an expression for the variation of the spin like this. And this is the spin evolution equation. So we obtain a set of four differential equations for each body. In this talk, I will, all, I will only show the results for the spins, which are probably the most interesting. And here I show a numerical simulation for a, the circumbinary planet Kepler-38, in which I show the spin of the planet as a function of the time, considering in different colors, different relaxation factor normalized by the mean motion of the planet. And what we can observe here is that there, are, there exist two different regimes with what is called the Steve regime, in which the relaxation factor is lower than the mean motion. And in this case, the tidal dissipation is inversely proportional to the viscosity. And these curves here represent the case of the gaseous regime, in which the relaxation factor is greater than the mean motion. And the opposite thing occurs about the tidal dissipation. In particular, the stiff regime, uh, you can see that uh, captures are also possible in resonance different than the 1 1, but this seems to be only uh, the case for very eccentric orbits or for very rocky objects, like, for example, satellites. On the other hand, about the Gatchel regime, we observe that the rotational stationary state is very close to the mean motion of the planet. And we can also observe that uh, it seems to be lower for increasing relaxation factor. So we decided to, to study in more detail the 1 1 spin orbit resonance, and we decided to construct an analytical model. And some results are shown here. This is the mean spin of the planet as a function of the relaxation factor, uh, considering in different colors, different planetary eccentricities, and in different type of curves, we consider different methods for calculating the, the mean value. Um, as you can see also, there, is, there are two different regimes. If we uh, are far away from this transition situation, we observe that the rotational equilibrium solution becomes independent of the relaxation factor. For example, in the Steve regime, we observe that the, the mean spin asymptotically synchronized with the mean motion, and this is independently of its orbital parameters or body masses or stellar masses. And on the other hand, about the Gatchel regime, we observe that the stationary solutions do depend on the orbital parameters and stellar masses. And uh, we can observe that the presence of the secondary inner star leads to a slower uh, respect to the two body simplification. Um, leads to lower the stationary spin, and which is possible to be subsynchronous for the case of very low eccentric orbits. 
So as an application of our model, we decide to say something about the stationary spin of the observed Kepler circumbinary planets. And this is why we decide to construct a map like this one here, in which we compute the mean value of the planetary spin as given by our analytical model as a function of the secondary mass ratio and the planetary eccentricity. Uh, and we overplot here the position of the observed Kepler system, which are expected to be in the gaseous regime. And in the white curve, we observe the situation in which the, uh, the mean planetary spin is expected to be in perfectly synchronous, synchronous state. And two interesting things are possible to observe. Um, this region here is the subsynchronous region, and this region here is the supersynchronous region. And as you can see, the size of the subsynchronous region is proportional to the secondary mass and is inversely proportional to the uh, planetary eccentricity. And even more interesting is the fact that the position in this diagram of the Kepler observed circumbinary system are typically in the subsynchronous region. Um, this is an unexpected result. So as a final discussion, we presented a model for treating the tides in the general free body problem using the grip type formalism. And this formalism can be easily applied to the general n body problem. All the bodies we consider were extended and tidally interacting. And we also consider the planar case with perpendicular spin vector. And we apply to the particular case, to the particular interesting case, which is the uh, rotation of a circumbinary planet. Uh, we show that the tidal interaction due to the presence of two companions or n companions, it can be always modeled by an equivalent unique interaction wh where the difficulty is in calculating the equilibrium figure. We observe that for low eccentric orbits, the spin, the one one spin orbit resonance is the most probable stationary state. We also observe that typical rotational evolution time scales are expected to be of the order of mega years for steep bodies, but for the case of large, um, for ga very gaseous planets, uh, maybe it can be much longer. Um, we have presented a high order and very precise analytical approximation for the mean rotational stationary state and which uh, shown to be good for estimating the subsynchronous state of most of the Kepler circumbinary systems. And of course, if we need to consider a more detailed uh, mm, deformation of real materials, we need to move to even a more complex theory about the, the rheologies. Thank you.